So we've just finished talking about the news of 2013. Now we're going to talk about Kickstarter, because this was the year of Kickstarter as... Well, yeah, we'll talk about the next video. Yeah, what happened essentially is that Kickstarter last year really started to get bigger because of the likes of things like Ouya mm -hmm. and Double Fine Adventure. I think that was getting really big as well, and they just kind of blew up to the point it's where everywhere. we have like a hundred Kickstarters. And that's over. just a small portion of them, and there's so many of them, we yeah. can't even cover all of them. Some of them succeed, some of them fail, some of them are newsworthy, yeah. other ones went under the radar. And, well, I, Alex here has compiled a yeah. huge list. I, we've, I've tried to follow up with all of them, but... <laughs> It's over. Uh, the original plan was to make a whole video series about it, but it came down to being there's just so many, just too, too many. All Dude, right, so holy cow. I'm gonna run down the list, and uh, if you're not, if your Kickstarter wasn't listed here, and you want to put your favorite Kickstarter here, comment below and mention it or something like that, because uh, we're gonna go through quite a bit. So first things first, we got Elite Dangerous from Frontier Developments. Uh, Elite Dangerous is a series, is the new game in the Elite series. It's a space sim title mm -hmm. uh, for PC, made like a million dollars, a million euro. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> then you have Pathfinder Online, which is an uh, action RPG on the mm -hmm. PC, uh, developed by Goblin Works, based off of the uh, the Pathfinder world. And then you have Anima Gates of Memories, which is an action or an action RPG in the which is actually based off of the World of Anima series. Uh, have, you, have you seen a theory uh, the, uh, theme thing here? Well, this is based off series, right? <laughs> series, everything's. Um, this is, hey, here's original Radio the Universe. Mm -hmm. Radio the Universe is developed by Sixty Sixty Sixty. It's uh, it's a it's essentially a combination of Zelda and uh, sci dark yes. sci-fi. This one also has a really nice art style that is very similar. It's an like eight bit, but it's modern eight bit. You know the, the art style I'm talking about. Um, but also it's kind of like another Kickstarter which that comes later. later. This one's more cartoonish style than that one. It's kind of a mix between again, it looks like a Zelda game, yeah. but with very dark futuristic experience. Yeah. Um, I'm I want to see how it progresses. Um, that, that's what I'm actually. Looking forward to it, as opposed to the other ones. Well, I'm I I, I wasn't a PC gamer when I grew up, so I, a lot yeah. of this stuff is over my head. Well, Anima is not really a PC game; it's also an action. Anyway, anyways, uh, Game Stick. It's a controller that looks like this. It's like a square controller that yeah. has a system inside it, which I is a USB. Yeah. And then you plug it in. Uh, it came out. It did. Um, uh, I'm just the fact that it, it, we see a lot of these. We're going to see a lot, a lot of, these. of it. Thanks to Ouya, we're going to see a lot of Android game consoles, yeah. and even with the new Steam OS stuff that I was talking yeah. about. That stuff's going to lead to more of those kind of things being developed. Yeah. Um, I like the idea. Of you know, it's inside the controller. That's good. Because if you lose the controller, you lose the console. Yeah. Well, isn't that... If you lose the controller, you can't play it anyway. Yeah, that's so. true. So, uh, Akadero Demon Hunters is developed by Crazy Horse. Uh, it's American McGee's development team. They wanted to make a spin on Red Riding Hood. And this one came out. Yep. I think it's like a free-to-play type game on PC. and browser. It's a browser game, effectively. Yep. It's so, made by American McGee. Did you say that right? Yep. American McGee and Crazy Horse. And then you have GCW Zero, which mm -hmm. means game consoles worldwide. It's a console handheld device. It's about this big. Uh, it's got a screen in the center, and it's it's really kind of an open-source platform. Yes. It's designed for homebrew experiences. A lot of homebrew games mm -hmm. out there that people can enjoy. Um, and it, did it come out yet, or is it still... It came out in October. Uh, a lot of it uh, seems to be pretty good, uh, though in terms of emulation, it doesn't work all the time. Uh, then you got Wild Man, which was uh, an interesting game, because it was developed by Gas Powered Games. So they have been known to making a few games in the past. They're actually a relatively large developer. But this was their like their last ditch ever to exist, and it failed. So they ended up clo uh, stopping the Kickstarter, and then they got purchased by Wargaming.net, which is the, uh, the developer of War of Tanks. World of Tanks. Well, War of Tanks. War of Tanks? I think it was that. I uh, don't pay much attention to those sort of things. I think so. it was World of Tanks. Um, anyways, um, the next one is Cryomore. It's another uh, Kickstarter campaign. Basically, it's like Zelda. They came with, came with like Metroid. Yeah. I like the Mega Man. They, 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 yeah, the, the idea about Metroid, this is the Mega Man element, was that you would take powers from enemies yes. or use or like use like, like the, the Cryomore stones and whatnot and use them uniquely. It's a steampunk universe. adventure where you collect these powerful yep. different elements uh, called Cryomores. Yep. That's the name. And you get ice cryomore, water cryomore, and you basically use them to interact yeah, with cryomore energy and all that stuff. It's pretty far along. Got, got, uh, it's not far too far along, but it's still in development. They constantly update on their blog. Mm -hmm. So, good stuff. Ascension Online, if you like Ascension, the card game, it's online now. Pretty much all you need to say. Worlds of Wander uh, is uh, essentially a, a, a level building product where you can build levels and worlds. And the concept was being headed up by uh, the. Uh, Tom Hall, who was the creator of Commander Keen, mm -hmm. uh, or at least one of the heads behind it. And he was actually going to make a spiritual successor using the same engine. It failed its Kickstarter, but they're still working on uh, producing it on the side, as well as having... It didn't look as uh, like artistically creative as... It looked Keen, too right? sterile. And then there's The Golem, which mm -hmm. is by Moonbot Studios. Uh, they were some newer developer. They've had a few games with Sony. Yeah, it, this was basically... You, you, were, you play as a Golem, 
uh, built out of like materials, and you're protecting yep. a city, and you get new power-ups and stuff like that. Sadly, it did not make its Kickstarter. Yeah. And there was artwork for it. It looked interesting. The game didn't enough, really have a whole lot to it no. in terms of actual completeness. It was mostly a pitch than anything, uh, which I think is probably the reason why it failed. But yeah, they're, that, they're that, working on getting that's actual... A, that's a thing people have to know, is that if you're going to do a Kickstarter, people like to see content uh, before yeah. they put in money. Unless down. you're a really well-known developer, which Moonbot was not, uh, just pitching with artwork is not going to win. Uh, but then we got Dreamfall Chapters: The Longest Journey by Red Thread Games. Uh, the Dreamfall, the, the the Longest Journey series. Mm -hmm. This is the third game in the series. Uh, full animation, full 3D, uh, coming out later this year, ho hopefully. And it's about uh, about two worlds: the most modern and one and the. It made a lot of money. Oh, yeah, it made a, a, over a million. Uh, over a million, 1.5 million. There's actually quite a few games that made over a million dollars in Kickstarter this yes, year. Yes, and a lot of them are continuations of franchises like Skullgirls. Mm -hmm. uh, Skullgirls. Except well, not, not, this is not. This Actually, like Skullgirls. Yeah. This is not really about Skullgirls. This is like the DLC for yeah. Skullgirls. Uh, essentially, what happened for those of you who don't know, Skullgirls development team uh, were laid off because Konami wouldn't give funds to the publisher who actually made uh, was helping the game being developed. Uh, but the team reformed as Lab Zero Games mm -hmm. to create uh, DLC characters for the game because they'd already been partly into creating a DLC character at the yeah. time. And the point was they wanted to get the Kickstarter money to finish their their character, and then of course they made their funding. Yeah, they and made more well, than enough. more than yeah. that because then they got more characters. I think there's five now characters. There were five in total. characters coming out. Of, there was a huge campaign yeah. of voting which characters were going to make it, and they even added Robo Fortune at the end because it's too cute. Uh, and the idea was that they were also, they said a lot of these characters might show up in future Skullgirl games if yeah, they the can I, get the yeah. IP back. The, the I, they ever get that back? I don't, it's still held by the publisher. Yeah. But the, I, but the I, no, the publisher is at Autumn Games. Oh, the okay. idea is that uh, the characters they showed off were supposed to show off the entire series of characters that would eventually yes. be in the game. And so people just voted for characters that even if they didn't have relevance to the actual main story that that game had. But either way, either way. Uh, it was great. Uh, Delver's Drop uh, is, developed, uh, is a, essentially a Zelda-like uh, -like game kind of a, a roguelike title too. You're trying to get further uh, into this dungeon mm -hmm. and it's using motion physics. It, still, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, The Binding of Isaac um, and other games like that where it's overhead in Zelda, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a Zelda. You'll find is a very big influence on the Kickstarter world. There came an echo. It's coming from the developer of Sequence, mm -hmm. uh, who also kickstarted his last of that project. Uh, this game essentially is a tactical a tactical game where you actually use your voice to, to send uh, orders to people, mm -hmm. like go over there and uh, and protect the front, uh, protect against Nav Point Three or something like that. Uh, it's and it's host uh, the lead character is Will Wheaton. So I guess I had to put that in there. Uh, Mage's Initiation is, uh, is an old, like an old school PCR uh, point click adventure game, yep. uh, in the style of Heroes of Heroes Quest and Quest for Glory. Yep. Uh, except you play as a mage, so that's cool. Uh, another castle is an arcade adventure game where everything is pixelated and retro style 3D. Uh, the point is that you're trying to get to a castle to pick up an item, only to find it's in another castle. Then you restart your journey, and you go when you, by the time you get to that castle or along the way to that castle, you find the object. It does you get to the next area. Yeah, so essentially it's a roguelike platformer Mario-esque experience. That's another thing you're going to hear a lot of, is roguelike. Yeah, roguelike is a big thing. Dark Souls, like Metroidvania, all of these are terms that will appear in your Kickstarters, whether you like them to or not. <laughs> but most people will like them in their Kickstarters. Yeah. You know what else people really like? Torment. Oh. Oh yes, they did. Oh yes, Torment, as we mentioned in our uh, news video, Tor uh, Torment: Tides of Numenera from In Exile uh, Entertainment. Uh, it was their second Kickstarter after Wasteland Two, and received over four million dollars in funding. Clearly, people want Torment. Yeah, Torment is actually the most funded game-based product of 2013 on mm -hmm. Kickstarter. Uh, like I said, a lot of games got pretty close. Some got three million, some got one to two million, but this one just kept on going. Uh, they actually recently had a. Uh, essentially a, a poll to find out how the battles should be. It was either pause in battle or real-time battle. I think it would turn out to be just pure turn-based is what, they, what people felt, uh, voted for. Uh, but yeah, Torment, it's going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> well, it should be for that money. Shroud of the Avatar Forsaken Virtues is uh, a new MMORPG experience from uh, from Lord British who created the Ultima series. Yes. I can't give much thought on um, It's an MMO. I'm kind of like, this, this is not really what Ultima was, but I guess, you know, let's give it to me. It almost made $2 million. So, you know, well, we're giving him a chance, I guess. Yeah. 
Pulse is, uh, I think it's by PyPixel Team, uh, is uh, a, a, a first-person adventure game. game where you are playing as a blind child who can only see the sound emitted by uh, by things around you. Like these fluffy creatures yeah. that and, also emit sounds. And you can only perceive what's being heard. So if you hear a mo like a bear making a, a growl, you might, as the blind person, as the blind child, might perceive it as like a gigantic monster. Uh, it's actually a rather interesting concept. And There's a demo out. You can play it. Yeah, now. you can play it now. It's a concept. It's not the actual game. It's a concept. Yeah. And they're, play. so they're they're doing pretty well. They're developing and onward and they've added some people to their team and so forth. So then comes the game that pretty much got us back into Kickstarter really uh, after the likes of Double Fine Yes, Adventure. I'm really excited for this one. Shovel Knight by Yacht Club Games. Yeah, so the game is essentially a game you play as a knight with a shovel yeah, of who course. has to defeat the Order of No Quarter. It's a retro side-scrolling adventure game using gameplay elements from Mega Man, Castlevania, and DuckTales, Duck Tales, especially Le Z Zelda 2, yes. Adventures of Link. Uh, and they had a very good amount of additional content added by fans. The game is almost out uh, by almost out, I mean it's probably another two months out. Yes, uh, um, it, it's really cool. The shovel, you get to dig, attacks, and you have different uh, types of knights with different yeah. types of weaponry. And uh, by the way, Yacht Club Games is made up of people from way forward, technology. Yes. So they, there's some good pedigree behind them as well. Battle World Kronos is a HD turn-based strategy game uh, akin to the Battle Isle franchise. So then you have Planet Explorers. Yes, this is a voxel-based game, right? Yeah, it's a it's an adventure game, kind of like it looks kind of like Xenoblade because it's or monsters, Monster Hunter, yeah. big monsters everywhere, and and you it's, and voxel-based has you, know, you can kind of terraform the world a bit, yes. build items to help you in your uh, quest. But more or less, it's a uh, very widespread action RPG experience that looks really good. Rock and Roll Racing 3D is a developer's attempt to make Rock and Roll Racing in 3D. It didn't succeed. Uh, but they actually did release it as something else. I don't have it listed here specifically. Uh, but it came out on Steam, and then it also had like, r like almost completely ripped off elements from the Rock and Roll Racing series. But, uh, well, that's what you expect. From it was going to be a Rock and Roll Racing game. So, yeah. Then you got Divinity Original Sin, which is uh, which was actually announced like last year. Uh, but the game was announced as a, as a computer RPG based in the Divinity universe. Camelot and Change from City State Entertainment is yep. a realm versus realm MMORPG uh, <laughs> that's made by people from Mystic and CSE. Uh, the game's plot is essentially this dark cataclysm that changes like half the population to this evil monster race, and so now we have to deal with the ramifications of that. If I'm reading this correctly, they asked for two million. Yeah, and they got more than that. So <laughs> good, good to know. Good call on their part. Then uh, an Indiegogo campaign, Ghost of a Tale, uh, was a game... That's not Kickstarter. That's it's Indiegogo. It's ah. crowdfunding. All right, you fine. play as a little mouse trying to travel into this island, and what, what you're trying to figure out, uh, what exactly you're there for, it's part of the story. Uh, it's developed by one guy who... Uh, this is his first game. So he's yeah, actually so a learning experience, and it looks really good. It kind of nice. reminds me of the... the, the style of uh, Demon Souls, where they go kind of over the ca head camera it system, and enemies is. coming at you and you're slashing. Yeah, but the thing that they, um, he mentioned that the game wasn't going to have as much combat as you'd expect. The game was more about traveling and exploring the world. Which I think is fine for him. Yeah, uh, I don't know how... He didn't say it was going to be huge either. He said it was going to be a shorter experience, not a huge game. But, you know what? As long as he gets the game out to backers, I say good for him. The next one is Chasm by Discord Games. It has a, it's kind of like Metroid, kind of not. It's got like this like, procedurally generated world yep. to explore. It's a, it's a side scroller platformer. And then you have Among the Sleep from Krillbyte Studio, which is a first person horror game from the perspective of a toddler. Yes, they recently released a demo, I think like a few months ago. Um, yep. And it, again, you walk around as a toddler. And uh, you have so you like don't a teddy bear yeah. with you. You can crawl to move faster, I believe. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like uh, it's like, like any other horror game. You have to go down and hide or stuff. But you're kind of left with this immobility issue because you don't really have walking down. And as a child, you don't understand things. So things that could be there could not be there. You just assume is there, and it's there. Then there's Jagged Alliance Flashback from Full Control. It's a tactical RPG in the in the Jagged Alliance franchise. Okay. <laughs> Again, we're seeing a lot of these. A lot movies. of franchises coming back or being made. And there's Stone Hearth from Radiant Entertainment, which is a strategy RPG with sandbox and crafting elements and with bit graphics. This one looks a lot like Minecraft, but Except also, it's, but it's kind of like a more like a, a yeah, far away isometric. Yeah, field. and also it actually reminds me of Eight Bit Heroes, the three, three, three Dot Heroes. Yes, Three Dot Heroes. Thank you for uh, the PlayStation Three. That's because, because you can make models of characters using the, a very similar engine. But I think it's a really good idea. The creative elements allowing you to create the creatures and yeah. the monsters. Um, as well as the inhabitants. Yeah, and the inhabitants. So that allows some more creativity there than just adding gigantic cubes. Son of Noir with Still Alive Studios uh, is uh, an action-adventure game where you have the ability to terraform the world and use telekinesis yes. with rocks. Uh, 
And one of the interesting elements is that it uses the emotive controller. Yeah, which, which is, is a brain which controller. Is a, which is a brain controller that allows you to, th which the guy actually shows on the, uh, one of his videos of him trying to create ground and push it down. It looks very good. Uh, the idea of actually moving the dirt and sand as you whoosh. Yeah, it not, kind of, I'm not entirely convinced with the emotive controller. <laughs> of but, course. But the actual game seems pretty solid. And also you can pull rocks off mountains and use them. Yeah, so, so it's got some sort of flexibility in what you can do. Now, uh, I think Guns of Icarus did have a Kickstarter back in the day, but even if it didn't, the developer Muse Games wanted to make an adventure mode for it, and they asked for a Kickstarter and got over hundred, almost two hundred thousand dollars for it. Um, I again, I don't know if there was a Kickstarter for it before. Um, this is exactly what Kickstarter is designed for, though, get to add new content to games and even create games that would not be possible otherwise. So, uh, so extra game modes are fine, as far yeah. as I can tell. Then there's Tug from Nerd Kingdom. Uh, which is an open world sandbox RPG with new, with tech and social sciences, but using blocks to place items everywhere. Does it sound a little bit like Minecraft, but a little bit different? A little yeah. different. Um, this is uh, again a theme that's showing up. It's not too big a theme, but it's still a theme. Uh, Minecraft and crafting is another. Yeah. It's a big thing. Um, a what's of. unique with this one is that you actually start playing as a young child, and then it'll, you become an adult over time, and yes. there's some there's some ramifications to the growth of your character over time. Uh, kind of like Fable, Fable should have been. Yeah, except with Minecraft elements instead of Zelda or third-person action game elements to it. So the next one is called Penny Arcade DLC. Yes, DLC was a podcast they used to have, but was canceled when their TV show started. Yeah, when Penny Arcade TV started. Uh, but in this case, they only have asked for ten dollars for the whole um, campaign. Yes, um, this is probably just done because they want they wanted to do it themselves. They just wanted people to see who else support it. I I think it's a little odd comparing that it's just a campaign that obviously would be met really easy. Uh, it's not like they can't pull out ten dollars and just pull it, get it themselves. <laughs> well, they just maybe they just want fans to see what the reaction fans would. I, I also think that it was a way for them to help sell merchandise for the concept of the of it by giving people something in return for funding the project. What's interesting is that. Uh, PT, uh, Pain Arcade TV canceled DLC, now DLC's back, they canceled the TV Pain Arcade TV, yeah, it's one of the few, and they also, uh, closed the Penny Arcade report, so. Yeah, that was also uh, closed. But this is also the second Penny Arcade, uh, tick Kickstarter they did. The first mm -hmm. one was f for them to remove ads. So, you know what, if, as long as their fan base wants to keep supporting them like this, then, by all means, they're going to keep doing it. The next game is The Stomping Land, which takes place in prehistoric times. Yeah, and you're trying to kill all these dinosaurs to try and get meat to survive. But the so problem, is, kind of, yeah, problem kind of, is that when you kill something, it's going to bring out the other uh, the other consumers, as it were. Is it kind of like uh, Torok? Uh, no, it's not at all like Torok. Oh, well, There's okay. no supernatural elements as far as I can tell about it. Mm. Then there was Raise the Dead. Pretty much he plays a little zombie with a light on its head or and something. And somehow, can, because of that, can control other, uh, zombies. other zombies. It's very Pikmin-like. In fact, the Kickstarter mentioned that it's very Pikmin-like except with zombies. Um, we've uh, seen it. We saw it at uh, PAX, didn't we? It was at PAX, so I don't think we actually got to got it. To, got to it. Uh, one of the things that was interesting about it is that the game actually canceled its Kickstarter, saying there was big news about it, and the, rea and the truth was revealed at E3. It was one of the eight games chosen by Sony to be published for PlayStation 4. So I think the game is being funded in part by Sony's uh, uh, indie fund, and then they're going to be releasing first on PlayStation 4. So that's pretty cool. Life of Pixel, a platformer, is a platformer game that takes a uh, block pixel between multiple worlds that represent different consoles. But all, they're all consoles, so you won't see any drastic changes in graphics. And there's also some handholds, but the point is that uh, the game failed, and he's going to keep on working on it regardless. And there's Hex from Cryptozoic Entertainment, uh, which is a no MMO uh, t trading card game that's only online. It's developed by the people who brought us World of Warcraft trading card game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say about it? It's a card game. Road Redemption from Dark Seas Games is a new game that's trying to play off of the Road Rash series, which essentially means a lot of motorcycles and a lot of guns. A lot of action. A lot of action. Um, it looked really early when we saw it. Yeah, but they're working on it. It's well, all these games. games are early. Still, not even games yet. They're concepts. They're concepts, and there's some games that are almost finished. But, you know, there's all differences in this wide, a wide spectrum of games on Kickstarter. I need to go, go. Hey. Since we're talking about wide projects, we're talking about Shadow of the Eternals. This was basically a, a, a spiritual successor to Eternal Darkness. Yep. Nintendo owns Eternal Darkness, and Silicon Knights closed down. Yeah. And so they got the assets for the, for whatever there's going to be uh, Eternal Darkness 2. 2. And so they were going to go out there saying, listen, we're going to make that spiritual successor, and we're going to make Shadows of the Eternal... Let's get money out there. And then a co big controversy happened with Dennis Dyack and about yeah, well, the product. Well, De and... Dennis Dyack was involved, and so people were kind of concerned that it would not end up well because they took a lot of time to get projects out. Uh, and Shadow of the Eternal was going to be essentially an episodic 
series. Yeah. So it, imagine Eternal Darkness in episodes, which sounds great. I mean, it makes but, sense from the game's But standpoint. the development team is small, and they were asking for about a million dollars and per episode, by the way. Uh, and the end result was that it just wasn't meeting people's expectations. I was cancelled once, restarted again, at, at, and yeah, it's a website. It wasn't even a Kickstarter. Yeah, and it still didn't make it. It still didn't make it, and as of September, it's now indefinitely on hold. So, I guess if someone wants to make a spiritual successor to Eternal Darkness... It's going to be Nintendo. It's going to be... So not going to be Nintendo, it's going to be somebody else. Spiritual successor means it's a new franchise. Oh, well, we'll see. Soul Saga by Disaster Cake is an RPG uh, that's taking a lot of elements from older uh, Wild Arms. Well, Wild Arms, Chrono Trigger, these are a lot of, you know, influences big, people big, say. Well, everyone has influenced by them somehow. Yeah, it's, it's actually being influenced by a lot of Final, a lot of uh, PlayStation RPGs, like Sui Kuden, uh, and uh, Final, old, the newer Final Fantasies. And Breath of Fire. Breath of Fire. Uh, but the game itself got funded quite a bit, and it had this really cool lore about the world being separated, there's dragons that got mutated by, the, by this dark power. It's really cool. Uh, in a recent update, they actually changed like, the whole art style. Yes, they uh, redid the art style completely. So if you watch the video, um, for it, was the like chibi, it was like chibi style. But you now might want to go back to the Kickstarter and actually look at the artwork because they've yeah. completely changed yeah. a lot of it. Uh, but it looks good. It's progressing. It's going to be on like every console under the sun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks good. Now, uh, Tobuscus. You know Tobuscus? He's on YouTube somewhere here. You search his name, he's probably going to be there. Uh, Tobuscus decided to make a game on Yidigogo. Tobuscus Adventures Wizards. I believe the concept is that he killed a wizard or something, and now he becomes wizard. I didn't and see anything on it, though. Yeah. Uh, I saw screenshot. I saw, like, pictures of like what they think was going to be, and it looked like a tower defense game, but on the flip side, he mentioned it was going to be like an adventure game, so I really don't um, know what it's going to be yeah. like. Uh, his uh, his yeah. dog was plastered all over the video, the, the uh, pictures. We're going to have to see it when, when like, further along in development, because we yeah. really can't make heads yeah. or tails for He it. made lots of money, like about uh, $600,000, so I don't... So uh, he, he better give us something for $600,000. Oh, should. We got a Kickstarter money. Yeah, yeah. Indiegogo go, go money. Arma Krog, period, is from Pencil Test Studios. It's uh, a new game franchise is a, from the developers of Neverhood. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be like Skull Monkeys and Claymation. It's well, it's not going to be like too much like Skull Monkeys. Well, that was a course. platformer. Yeah, well, this, this is, is going to be point-and-click adventure. It's going to have stop motion in it. Yep, um, they showed off a quick animation yep. of it. It looks interesting. Yeah, these really cool elements. They actually have, like, they actually showed in the Kickstarter video how they were playing the puzzles using actual cardboard pieces. Yeah, it's, they actually planned it out like, visually. And, and then, then they, they build it up because you know it's going to take. It, it, it takes a while. It's not like a graphic, like a like you can't, you can't just paste everything around and just yeah. change it. Everything has to be made beforehand. It was really cool, uh, and it's coming up relatively soon, hopefully. And then comes a hat in time from Gears for Breakfast. This is a game that's somewhat like uh, Banjo Kazooie. The, yeah, the concept is that they is that the developer really wanted to bring back the Collectathon. Yes, uh, he, he they missed the the lamenting the lack of open world exploration, collecting items, stars, or what have you, and progressing in a world like that. Uh, the game concept that they showed us was uh, like a mafia island, and then showed us that it changes heavily over from one area to the next. Uh, it's got. Uh, a lot of people behind it. it uh, Grant Kirkhope is making a few songs for it now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be very much like the games of yore. And it's chapter-based. And it's chapter-based. So each world is a chapter, effectively. Uh, they think they're, they were planning four or five, and they got an extra two or something because of funding. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really big, uh, and it looks really nice, even though we haven't seen more than really two worlds so far. The alpha is about to come out uh, so? for early access, I believe. So it's going to be fun. We'll keep an eye out for that one. And then comes good old Double Fine Productions. You couldn't keep them away. Yeah, so the Double Fine Adventure is almost finished. Now it's called Broken Age. The first part's almost out, if it's not out already. Um, and uh, this game is the second development team, because there's three in the team. It's a big it's, team. It's Massive Chalice, which is uh, essentially a strategy tactical game where you play as an immortal king who's trying to st stop evil forces from destroying the land and causing great cataclysm by therefore collecting the Massive Chalice. Ta -da. And one of the interesting elements is that you get to decide. Essentially, you have to decide whether to send your best men out to be killed or to keep them and expect their heirs to get stronger and therefore. And you have more them. people on your on your team. Yeah, so it's a very interesting product, uh, especially since you're an immortal king. <laughs> but uh, it's very early on. They they had no gameplay footage or anything like that. I didn't see any. At least, and the same thing happened with Double Fine Adventure. They had nothing to show. So this is kind of uh, at least this one actually is a definitive product that we're going to see hopefully soon. So last year, the, the Oculus Rift was a big thing, and it actually became relatively large this past year for people because people actually got it and threw it. All right, what are you getting? Get Gives the Kickstarter. Well, Omni. Omni is a special product, which is essentially a pad that you st that you walk on with special patented shoe braces, and allows you to walk with VR glasses on. It actually registers walking movements. 
So basically, you get you get pulled into the game even further. Even further. Eventually, you won't remember reality. Soon, I will be lost in the internet. Don't. I'm already lost There's in the internet. There's part in the internet you don't want to go. Stay away from those. Stay at home. You have a curfew. Then we have H Hour World's Elite. Yep, that's developed by David Sears, who is the creative director of SOCOM 1 and 2. Yep. Uh, SOCOM is no longer happening. Uh, yeah. Massive action game is pretty much gone now. So he wants to make a new franchise in the vein of SOCOM. And Spiritual I, Successor! I, I believe... <laughs> but the idea is that uh, I believe we're trying to pitch a, a demo video, a demo level, to publishers to make a new full game. But I think they're really getting ahead because they're, they're working on alpha builds and stuff and... Uh, people are starting to see screenshots leaked and stuff. It's really neat. It's neat to see something actually come about from this. Now let's get away from the action, the adventure, the point and click, the strategy, to go to something more text-based. Uh, Mega Tokyo is an online comic. It's still series. a thing. It's still a thing. Um, and he, they are they they kickstarted a visual novel game. Yep, and uh, that's pretty much all you need to know because it made a lot of money doing it. It's almost $300,000. Mm -hmm. so. so yeah, made it. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Is it going to be animated? I don't know. It's going to use their pictures and stuff. Well, obviously, that's what a visual game I don't does. think it's going to be fully animated, no. Either way, um, they got their, their funding, so we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> and then comes Yatagarasu Attack on Cataclysm, which is a fighter, which is a 2D fighting game created by the people who used to create King of Fighters. Mm -hmm. So it looks really neat. They're adding a few characters to the original release, which was a bit of a while ago. Uh, and it's going to be made into full widescreen and all that fun stuff because the original was, you know, three by four, mm -hmm. just like an old classic uh, fighting game franchises. And Five Life Studio is was bringing Satellite Rain, which is a class-based real-time strategy game by the creator of Syndicate Wars. Yep, that's a lot of words coming out of my mouth. But see, so yeah, a Syndicate Wars developer wants to make a more strategy, real-time strategy game, and that's what we're going to get. Because we got uh, four hundred sixty-one thousand euros. <laughs> yes, it did. Next, we have War Machine Tactics. Yeah, and it's a tactical combat ba game that's very similar to Valkyrie Chronicles, where you're actually right down there in the action. You have little foot soldiers, gigantic mechs, you know, big, small. And there's a whole bunch of different classes now, and there's a lot to it. Yeah. Seven Days to Die by The Fun Pimps Entertainment. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, I like the name. It's, 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 it's different. Open world voxel based si sandbox zombie survival game. Yes, you can craft in this game too, try to survive, build places. It's actually out on early access right now, but yeah. I, don't, I don't really recommend you play uh, it. Apparently, I hear that it's kind of missing elements. It's missing a lot because it's early access. Yes, so. so I recommend you waiting until at least we get a better build for it. Mm -hmm. And there's Candle, which is uh, essentially a point and click adventure game mm -hmm. where, or mixed with adventure experiences where you, where everything is hand drawn yes, hand -painted. And, and hand painted. Uh, and the game, one of the game's biggest elements is that you don't have hand, a hand really to hold things. You instead have a candle which that lights you, things that's up. light and change in variances and that actually changes the puzzle elements of the world. Monochroma is a side-scrolling adventure game where you play as a young boy who has to help his brother who's injured yeah. uh, as they travel through a dystopian 1950s world, sort of. Yeah, it's got a robot factories, it's, and also it has a similar uh, aesthetic. And a Zeppelin! How many games are you going to have a Zeppelin a in? Zeppelin. Apparently also it's got an aesthetic similar to that of uh, Limbo. Limbo. It's got, Except it's got a scarf that's red. It's got a red scarf. Um, red, red is kind of there. Do you want to talk about this game? Or what? You can talk about it if you want. Well, we're done talking about oh, it. Oh, okay then. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the next one then. Okay. Ghost Song is created by Matt White and it is in the style of Metroid. Yeah, it's a, a game where you play as a robot, uh, that's been, a drone that's been sent to this planet that's had a really dark history to it. Yes. Uh, the a game, lot of ghosts. A lot of ghosts. That's and, the name. And one of the elements that believes that you're trying to essentially make them, uh, trying to figure out what, what causes these ghosts to still be here and why you can try and revive it. There's, he says it's hard like... Uh, Dark Souls. Entirely like Dark Souls. And has a lot of different variations where you can use a charge shot that powers up your body and you, reduces hit points just so you can shoot stronger shots. Stuff like that. Very interesting. Uh, it was originally a Flash game and now you turn it to full Unity. It's it's progressing very well. The great animations. And again, it, it's, it's the style of Metroid. The style of Metroid, which is immediately uh, making Tony's brain go... Yes. And if you happen to like Japanese RPGs, your, yeah. brain, your brain would be going... To Project Phoenix. Well, they didn't really show anything. They for didn't it. show anything for it, but it, it promised a lot. Uh, Creative Intelligence Arts, which is comprised of people from both Japan and in the West, uh, to create an R Japanese RPG that is of the scale of those older franchises. Um, again, I, I, it was basically just them pitching the idea. Um, it, it made it. Made it. 
by by a lot by a lot ten times as much. It's a million dollars. It's right a million there. dollars right there for something as simple as we're making a JRPG, but we have helped make Final Fantasy sometimes. Yeah, that helps. That that really helps if you just say, oh yeah, we're getting Nobu Amitsu to help make a song for it or something like that. <laughs> that that really helps. Speaking of music, uh, Video Games Live Level Three had a Kickstarter. Yes, uh, again they want they want to make an album for the third it's the third album. It's right? the third album. And uh, yep, they, and they made their goal. That's good. Good for them because I really like video game music. And video game live from Tommy Tallarico is really neat because that orchestral music, orchestral music is rocking it. It's it's all good. It it runs the gambit. Yeah. So we've actually done a few downloadable content campaigns so far. Yes. This is no different. This is Awesome Knots Star Storm from Ramen Ramo Games. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, awesome Knots is a mobile side scrolling shooter experience. Uh, this is essentially downloadable content, which I believe adds about I think three new characters to the, to the mix, as many as three. I think three or four, around that number, and they add more campaign elements to it as well. Uh, and fans answered with lot, with about double the money, at least. Mo at least. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's good to see them progressing. It's now coming out for the PS4, I believe, was one of their stretch goals. They're trying to get it on the PS4, and it'll also follow with the DLC. So really good. Neverending Nightmares is a horror game, but a, but a very dark horror game. What I mean by that is it's actually dark, as in the, the lighting is very dark. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, like, it's you're done with ink. It's drawn with ink. It's cross stitching. Yes, it uh, looks really like, the, well drawn. Yeah, one of the interesting things about it is that the developer, who he's also the developer, who made Retrograde, which is available on PlayStation Three. Uh, he he made this game as an, essentially an answer to his own mental anxieties. So it's really a personal project from internally as well as a very dark story on the outside. And he released a version of it for some people to play and get early access to. Uh, so yeah, so you can look on YouTube. There's a whole bunch. Yeah, of a whole lot of uh, people, people playing it. playing it, and it has some downright scary moments in it. And just the the way that it's very just dark. It's very dark, and dark. art and the art is very it's dark. Very, it's dark. It made its money uh, barely, but it made it so good for him, and hopefully it turns out well. And now for the part that Tony likes the most. Mm -hmm. Well, I like Ghost Song, but My Number Nine by Keiji Nafune and Concept. Yes, yeah, so Keiji Nafune had a Pax Prime said, you know, I'm gonna have a panel just dedicated to uh, Mega Man, and I'm talking about my pro my history and developing. And then also he goes, by the way, I'm working on a new project, Kickstarter, Mighty Number no. Nine, spiritual successor to Mega Man. Yes, um, it, it looks great. Um, well, the concept looks, looks great. great. We, haven't, we haven't seen a lot of footage of they the game. They showed like a, a concept because it's going to use the UDK, which is really odd. It uses Unreal as the engine for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming out for everything because it passed every single stretch goal they passed for it, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's progressing along. Come out next year. Yes, he's a character that can transform, and I'm, I'm, I can't wait for it. <laughs> he can't wait for it. I can't. Then came Sunless Sea from Fail Better Games. It's a seafaring game where you're actually un in an underground ocean, essentially, mm -hmm. and there's otherworldly monsters. Uh, and it's very dark. It's and if I read the trailer right, you can eat your crew members. Yeah, if you want to. It's supposed to be about tough decisions. And the eating strategy, your crew members yeah. happens to be one of those tough and decisions. And exploring in dark. And darkness. Dark. Thus the name Sunless Sea. Yes. Then Shantae, Half Genie Hero. I feel kind of bad for this game because yeah, it, was, it came out the same time as Mighty Number no. Nine. Uh, it was being pit, it was being like hyped before Mighty Number no. Nine got announced. The number Mighty Number Nine got announced, and two days later this got announced. It was like no. I mean, they, they worked together. To try oh yes, and, they did. Try and get uh, it's a, it's, a sequ it's another sequel to Shantae. It's actually a reboot, isn't it? It's not a sh not a reboot. It's the next game in the series. Uh, some people do have some concerns because they were making another game already. Yes, uh, it's already and, a Shantae game that's not out yet. Yeah, and uh, this, and on top of that, the game has never been on anything other than a few Nintendo platforms. Well, it's so, coming out to all the HD platforms. All it's HD Shantae, platforms. Shantae, basically yeah. not HD graphics, new, new art style, and, and it dancing. Got, and it got about, I think I got four or f like an extra two episodes or something into it. Uh, didn't make through a lot of the stretch goals. Right now, have, you can, well, at Way Forward, you can actually uh, do go to their PayPal, PayPal, and you can actually continue to put money towards it, which will help reach its other goals. Uh, so, As with most other projects you'll see here on this list. Then came DCS World War II Europe 1944. What a mouthful. It's a bit more complex of a title. But anyway, from ROG Studios, it is a flight simulator based in the World War II aircraft world. Yep. It's, what else do you gotta say about that? It's using help. Well, it's help from Eagle Dynamics, which is a big aerodynamic group. So it's using very focused on. They want to make it legit, as legit as possible. The fall. That's the next game, by the way. The fall. Oh, the fall. Yes. You basically um, you play as an AI controlling a robotic suit, where the human inside the suit is unconscious, and you have to bring them to safety. It looks cool. It's got like a. Kind of like a Metroid thing. Yeah, they mentioned it. Metroid. They did mention it, but also got like a, you can pick up objects and interact with the environments with the point and click adventure. Like yeah, stuff. I'm I'm surprised that they, that they don't make the the robot look less human 
Because if the if it's like imagine if someone's passed out and a robot just has to control a person, they should like, walk like this. Very yeah, it looks like but, it's like walking but like it's, a human. But I guess I'm guessing it's trying to give some sort of emotion to the robot. They want you to make you feel for the AI because apparently, according to the video, after he gets the human to safety, they'll destroy him. Yep. Yeah. So, so looks good. It's dark. It's dark. It's dark. <laughs> Everything's dark. This is not dark, though. Well, no, it's very colorful. Yes, yeah, very colorful. And, and barf is what happened. Barf! It's River City Ransom Underground. Yeah, so Continus Creative is an indie developer who uh, went to the actual owner of the IP in Japan and said, hey, we want to make a game sequel for this franchise. And they said, okay, do it. Uh, so that's what they're doing. They're making essentially a, a licensed sequel to River City Ransom using the mm -hmm. same art style of the older days. Now there's new characters, a uh, new story, yep. and new environments. It's, it's crazy. I, I'm not... Some people weren't necessarily liking some of the outlandishness that they went so in some areas. Like some of the character artwork is not yeah. as good, but uh, it looks good. It's it's River City Ransom. Hopefully, it'll turn out for the best in the end. Mm -hmm. This is a nice one. Yeah, this one actually I think got the most money beyond what it asked for. I got like seven hundred percent. Yes, Hyper Life Drifter by Heart Machine. Yeah, so this game is an adventure game with a heavy pixelated style, uh, where you kind of like kind of Zelda like, kind of like Bastion, where you're traveling through this. World, this desolate world, trying to find something, and you can drift across pits. It's like, shoo, 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 yeah, and very, it's very hard. It's apparently, it's, very it's, tough. well, it's got yeah, it's got a lot of difficulty to it. I think I said Dark Souls. I think it was mentioned in there. Another theme, uh, and uh, yeah, it wanted to come out. It was almost finished, and they just wanted more money to get it finished faster because they they were using up their money. Yeah, uh, so. they got lots of money. They had over mm -hmm. seven hundred thousand. And now it's coming out for like the PlayStation Vita, the, the Wii U. It's oh, like, sorry, not seven hundred, six forty-five. I was sorry. It was that was. Pretty good amount of money, though. And then Sixth Sense announced the STEM System Kickstarter. Yes, these are the guys who made the, the Hydra controller. Hydra controller. Uh, it was originally pit, uh, pitched for you know PC motion control system that's attached via uh, cords. Cords. This is a fully wireless system. Yes. And its emphasis is on the concept of VR. So things yeah. like you know Oculus Rift. Rift and the Omni. <laughs> Soon everybody's just going to be walking in place like this, and it's going to work. Everything's just going to be perfectly signed. Because the fact is, the we're, we're concerned with wires when it comes with VR. Is that if you move with wires, eventually they might cross. You might pull your computer away from this, from where it is. Yeah. But in this case, it's going to be completely wireless. It's attached to your body. Part. You can attach it to a body, or to you can hold these the wands. And either way, it did a lot. It did fairly well. It got it got six hundred thousand dollars, and it's uh, going through development phases. And I think it was shown at CES, but you know, oh, CES yeah. happened a couple weeks ago, so I don't. I mean, we weren't there. The Long Dark is a first-person survival game. You crash land in the snow, and you have to survive. Yeah, so you have to deal with traveling through these, these otherwise abandoned cabins and other world areas and in the wilderness wolves. and trying to scare off wolves that are chasing you down probably at a constant rate. It's a, po a really interesting uh, way of survival because uh, a lot of survival is about in dark areas, damp, monsters chasing you. Now it's like more realistic. Uh, kind of like To Build a Fire from Jack London. Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting experience that's a little bit more realistic than you'd expect for a world. It's actually fairly beautiful, too, because mm -hmm. it's using a very uh, muted art style to it. James Pond is back. Yes, well, he tried to come back. Yeah, he tried to come back. James Pond, in case you didn't know, was an, was an old uh, platforming series where you played as a fish that could somehow extract fish. Himself. He was like a superhero agent. Yeah, thus James Pond. James Pond yeah. uh, the fran it didn't really have any... Thing to show. No, no artwork. They had. They no, had nothing. They didn't have, listen, they had. At least they had the guys talking about it. Yeah, they talked about it. But either way, the uh, Kickstarter was canceled because they came to the realization they had nothing to show. So, so they're going to start it again later with more stuff to show. To give it a little more clout. And uh, you know what? Uh, Armor Krog is not the only uh, claymation-based game. Uh, uh, here, Night of the Go Night and the Ghost Lights from Mobot Studio. It's a stop-motion platformer, though. Yeah, so everything is stop motion uh, movements, and at the same Models time, and... at the same time, you also have unity movements. Uh, you play as a character who essentially tries to bring in uh, the ghost, the ghost, ghost, uh, for the the ghost piper. They said it was yeah, the ghost piper, and uh, they really didn't explain much else about what the game had to offer from what we looked, glanced through. But so. it definitely looks like they're taking their time to make these small characters and really make it. You know, yeah, I'm motion. actually really enjoying that art, the art style concept. Making real life models and getting them into the game is difficult. So hopefully they can make it. They can do it right.
Cosmic Star Heroine was created by Zeboid Games, the creators of Cthulhu Saves the World. Yes, uh, they've been actually relatively large, uh, larger with each game. Yes, they, they did uh, Penny Arcade, uh, Into the Darkness. Yep, episodes 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was their first attempt to really make a bigger project. Yes, this uh, is an art style of like Fantasy Star. It's like Fantasy Star, like Sega CD-based RPGs, mm -hmm. and they really wanted to release it on other platforms, so now they were, the big pitch was to get it on Sony platforms. Yep. It actually was announced... Uh, a few months earlier to be coming to PS4. So this was their Kickstarter to actually get it done. And, yes. and they actually... Uh, what the interesting thing about them was they weren't actually pitching for stretch goals. No. They wanted just the game to be done. Yeah, and actually they outright said that. that was, there's, no, there's not going to be stretch goals. Just We just want the money for the game. Yeah. And I think it's actually I think the first time I've ever seen that where a developer outright says, listen, we want to get the money... The you product, the money, you'll get, you're yeah. just paying for the extra stuff we're giving you. You're not, we're not getting anything else to the game. Yeah, so that game is expected to come out at the end of this year. So good luck to them. There's only two of them, or three if you count the music people. So hopefully they can get that game out, because it looks pretty darn good. And mm -hmm. uh, very Chrono Trigger-esque, too, is what I'm seeing out of it, too. Citizens of Earth by Eden Industries is another RPG, but it takes on the style of Earthbound, but it's a little different. It's got a slight twist to it. Yeah, you play as the vice president of the world, and uh, apparently, as the new vice president, uh, you find out that, you, that there's a lot of danger happening. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that you actually recruit people who are ordinary citizens. Your citizens mom, of Earth! Yeah, your mom, uh, a person who has into conspiracies, the mailman, these sort of things. And when you go to these missions to save the world, or whatever, what have you, these are the people you actually, who actually battle, not you. you. Yeah, you actually you tell them to, it's too important to fight. Yeah, you, you tell people what to do. You're vice president. Yeah, and so uh, basically they, 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 it plays again similar to uh, Earthbound. Earthbound. Um, we saw uh, it being played. It does look a little bit convoluted. Uh, they need to work it. Yeah, it, they're it did, it make, did it make its It did not make its goal. Sadly. Uh, they are working on, so they actually released a second demo to backers, and they're still working on it, and they're trying to find other uh, other funding. Oh, and I guess we didn't really mention it, but Ian Industries is headed up by people who worked for Next Level Games, including a number of people who worked on Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which came out last year. Yes. So, uh, good luck to them. Hopefully the game gets uh, gets finally brought out about and and finds another way to get funded or we get another Kickstarter or something like that. Either way, uh, it looked like a pretty neat title when I saw it. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of MMORPGs? Because we had another one. Uh, this one is... <sighs> no check. <laughs> <laughs> the project, it's called The Phoenix Project, City of Titans. Uh, you may not know this, but there was an MMO called City of Heroes. Uh, they actually recently shut it down, and everyone's sad, sad face. Aww. But then it happens with online games. Yeah, but then Mystic Worlds Media decided, let's remake the world. Let's make a new RP MMORPG similar to it. Let's call it World City of Titans. Yep. And so far, it's it actually did pretty well. It made six hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars from their request, and it's uh, progressing along steadily. Then you have RimWorld from Tynan Sylvester, which is a space colony sim that utilizes an AI program to create a story. Uh, much like you use the concept of the director from, uh, from Left 4 Dead to create a world, this is to create a story in, the, world, in the, the colony that you're in. It's pretty interesting. It actually made quite a bit of money. They made like 268000 and you only asked for twenty. So definitely a lot of uh, interest in that. Retro is a magazine about retro games. Yes, yeah, so the concept was actually using a whole bunch of people from, from the uh, old world of magazine writing for video games and to try and create a new magazine dedicated to games of old and games of new that are based on games of old. It's, it's a kind of all catch-all, more or less. So what happened to it? Uh, the first the first issue just came out. Oh. It's, it's going to be bi-monthly, so it's, they're actually also uh, available physically at play-and-trade stores, if you can find them. Yeah, find one. Um, so yeah, for, in the cover story, Mighty Number no. 9. Legend of the Lancer is a side-scrolling ac action game where, which kind of surrounds around the story of the missing lo the lost king and a powerful lance. Of course, uh, the problem is, is that you know it it didn't finish it the did, campaign. It, no, the campaign didn't work. Like, they actually canceled it. They said they'll reboot it yes. in the future to try and emphasize because they don't have what, enough to show. Yeah, there wasn't much showing. It was a quick video of them jumping around, and that was about it. Yeah, so we'll see them restart it later this year. You are not the hero is exactly that. You play as someone who is not the hero an NPC. and an NPC. Uh, so the game's concept is actually trying to go through the world not fighting enemies. So as enemies are wandering around, you actually have to do things to try and avoid the enemies because you can't actually physically defeat them. Whereas the heroes, who you kind of have a disdain for because they just come in and rob you, uh, they have to go ahead and do the quest, not you. Yeah. Cast AR from Technical Illusions is literally a, a pair of glasses with two AR devices that fire out and project, project 3D images. And apparently it works 
though the, the Kickstarter kind of like you can see the pictures, but then like, you can't really see. What's no, going. you can only get to see it to believe it. And of course, well, we weren't can't see it yet, so so we really can't believe it. But it made over a million dollars, so obviously there's a lot of interest in that sort of project. So I mentioned James Pond as a failed Kickstarter. That was a reboot. Mm -hmm. Here's another failed Kickstarter. Boogerman, the 20th anniversary. Yeah. Um, they're, they're not, they didn't make their Kickstarter campaign, sadly. No. Um, but they're going to take the game and make it a brand new game rather than a remake of Boogerman. Yeah, good luck to them. when They were trying to get Earthworm Jim involved. Yeah, too. he's in it as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, good luck to them when they relaunch. Cyan, the developer of Myst, decided to announce a new franchise called Abduction. Yes, I love the Myst franchise, so with all its puzzles and craziness. Yep, and so that's pretty much what you expect, is essentially a new Myst game from the creators of Myst. Expect isolation, expect puzzles, expect great things. Scale is also a thing to expect great things from, based on what I've seen about it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. See, you know, Scale is a first-person uh, puzzle adventure game where you play as someone who's been trapped in a pup prison, and the only way to get out is to change the sizes of everything around you. Yes, and uh, you're actually inside another prison, inside another prison, inside another prison. You, yes, you basically have a gun with you that change, it can suck the size out of things and make push size into things. Yeah. So, like, you could... If the house is too big, you shrink the house, then jump on the house, then grow the house. <laughs> and it, it's pretty intense. Uh, the game it made it... It's crazy. It's looking. crazy. Look it up. I like this one. I like this I, one. I, I, yeah, it's pretty cool. Then there's Chirbles, which is uh, an adventure, a uh, little adventure game where you play these little cute little... Chirbel little creatures. Chirbles. Thing, and they, they attack. Oh, they're called Chirbles, oh, not Chirbles. Sorry, I'm... Get out of here. It was a fun game, a cute little experience, and people can actually make their own little characters uh, that they can go around and kill giant snakes. Enough about that, let's talk about Night in the Woods. Yeah, so Night in the Woods is an adventure game uh, where you have, play as a young cat who has come back after failing from college mm -hmm. and find out that you have the ability to see ghosts. <laughs> yes. It's really, about coming, it's really a coming-of-age game uh, where you, you kind of wander around, you see how the world has changed while you've been away. Your best friends change, yes. your new friends show up. and It really didn't explain much of the gameplay element, though it looks like it's a platforming adventure with some puzzle elements, some dialogue twists. I really like the art style. It, it looks really sweet. they got a lot of money and a lot of questions about where it's, when it's coming out and where it's going to. Um, but again, it, I like it. Yeah, it looks really sweet. The Girl and the Robot is a 3D action game where you play as a young girl and also the robot whom she is fixed. Uh, so and protecting and protecting from evil robots from and evil sorceress and that's all I could pick out from that video. Yeah, so it's really cute because you have a cute giant robot and the cute little girl is like, oh, he's so cute, it's a giant robot, it kills things. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of, it really uh, kind of Ghibli esque. I think it was one of their things they tried to be like in terms of art style. Uh, well, they can match Ghibli. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Ghosts and Goblins Demon World. Yeah, that's a thing? It tried to be a thing. Oh. Basically, they, uh, a developer said, you know what, Capcom's not making a Ghosts and Goblins game, we'll make a sequel, and if they have a problem with it, they'll stop us. Guess what they did. They stopped them. Yes. They said they have a new game to announce in, in fall 2014. We don't know what that's going to be. Yeah, or if it's just going to be a, like, a new spiritual success uh, successor to it. Eh, whatever, I mean, if they want to do it, they could do it. There's nothing stopping them making a game like it. Yeah. Just, just don't use the name. actual name. Paradise Lost First Contact is a stealth game where you play as an alien trying to get out of a research facility. Yeah, it's interesting because you have multiple different ways of doing it. You have the stealth way where you're just trying to avoid things. You could be a little more pro provocative attacking people by dropping uh, dropping spores. spores uh, or you can just, just keep on running. You can book it. Uh, the game has a lot of interesting intertwining storylines into it. And it's got a really cool art style. I too. like it a lot. And I like a lot of the sprite games we've seen recently. Mm -hmm. Stasis. It's an isometric horror game where you wake up in a, from stasis, obviously, yep. and your family hasn't, and you're trying to figure out where you are, because this isn't where you're supposed to be. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of dark elements to it. Uh, it's compare, he, uh, The creator compared it to The Dig from LucasArts. It's a very sci-fi world. Uh, he's actually using three models, but it's actually 2D in, her, in its presentation. Mm -hmm. It's really neat, and uh, made quite a bit of money for it, so... Down Run 2 did not make its money, sadly. No. Um, if you haven't played Down Run, it's a free game to play. It's like a flash game. Where it's you a flash game you're trying to run away from the, from the apocalypse, effectively. Yes. Um, and this game was going to have different stages, different characters, yeah. and none of that came around, sadly. Yeah, so the development team has gone on record to say it's on ice right now, but they have like three or four major projects they want to work on this year anyways. So they'll probably bring it back. Whether it's on Kickstarter, I don't know, but they're probably going to probably fund it because they're bringing Down, Down Run to Steam. So this yeah. will probably be what they're going to fund it with. Then there's Tadpole Treble, yes. uh, which is developed by, which is a music game developed by the creator of Brawl and the Family, which it's is a web comic, web comic uh, involving characters from Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Uh, but this has nothing to do with that. It's got to do with the Tadpole. Uh, what happens is that you essentially you're riding across 
uh, musical chords, and you're trying to play notes at the same time trying to dodge attacks and monsters and whatnot, all falling to the beat of the music. Yeah, it's a very interesting project. It's an interesting project in terms of the sense that uh, the music, he says, is not really really pushed in terms of a, in terms of an actual game, and this is going to try and teach you some music elements while you're playing, and uh, it's also the charming art style that Brawl and the Family has in it. So, good luck with the project. The Mandate is a space sci-fi RPG that emphasizes a lot more on the internal structure, on how the captain works with his crew, more so than, say, just the relationships between one crew and another crew in different ships. The Seventh Guest Three, The Collector. Oh, I like this presentation video because it kind of was supposed to be in the vein of Seventh Guest. Seventh yeah. Guest. Um, it didn't make its Kickstarter. No, it did not. It's right now on Indiegogo, right? It, it's not on Indiegogo. It's on its own crowd-hosted website. Oh, yes. Uh, the concept is that it's supposed to be uh, the group? next game in the, in the Seventh Guest franchise. Yeah, you know, it's got the creepy voice over... And uh, it's a CG, you know, that's the, uh, CG backgrounds and actual people. Uh, it's actually pretty neat uh, if you're into uh, if you're into that sort kind of, of stuff. Yeah, the Seventh Guest, you know, it would be cool to see a sequel. Again, I, I really give him props for the, for the attempt of the video. It was good. And Lobo Destroyo, which is essentially a rare collectathon game, much like uh, Hat in Time, but this time you're playing as a wolf luchador. Yes, so expect action, expect exploration, expect, expect collecting, and rarisms. Yes, which is collecting. But catacomb kids. Hey, that roguelike term is coming back. Yes, roguelike. It's a platform ring. It's a side-scrolling roguelike game with pixelated gra with pixel graphics. It's roguelike. Yeah. Roguelike. Sprite Lamp is a new tool that someone's working on to try and create dynamic lighting on 2D sprites. Yeah, so by creating different uh, spectrums of what the light should be based on where, where the, the light is, is uh, you can actually create normal maps, and then you can actually see how it turns out by where you move the light. It's really cool looking when he shows it yes, off. Yes, and it's not just for sprite work. He's saying it also works with texture working for 3D games. So yes. Yeah, so. He hopes to create some really interesting effects, and based on what I saw, I'm impressed. Yeah, I, I was impressed too when I saw it. So Many Me is a, is a puzzle platforming game where you play as a little creature and his clones. Yes. And you try to save the world with his clones. That's why it's So Many Me. Yep. It didn't make its Kickstarter, though. No. It's kind of sad. Yeah, they, they are trying to work on other ways. they uh, trying to look at a future as to what they can do with the game uh, now that the game clearly failed its Kickstarter. They, I don't know if they're going to reboot it or try and re like, get some more money into it or whatnot, but they're still work trying to figure out what to do with it now. Festival of Magic from Snowcastle Games is a, an RPG where it combines elements from farming elements on top of it, as well as companion improvements, where if you have somebody in your team with you, that improves your stats in certain ways. Uh, the game actually canceled its uh, campaign partway through because they wanted, they felt that it would be better if they launched it in the new year because people were too focused on the Christmas season. Yes. Super World Kart GP is a game in the style of Super Mario Kart for the Super Nintendo, with isometric views and maps and... Yeah, and it takes place across the world, too, in multiple locations, uh, and uh, includes characters from other Kickstarter campaigns as well. Sadly, they didn't make it. No, it didn't. Uh, we don't know what they're doing with it right now. Um, yeah, the were, they recently had a they comment. Had, they did a Kickstarter it. comment update, but it's unfortunately backers only. So uh, it could be them just him just privately thanking the people, and that's it, or he's actually going to do certain things with the project. I have no idea. Yeah, so uh, we don't know what the product's going. Yeah. I hope he does, because it looks Yeah, it looks pretty neat. Grapple Knight from Red Knight Games is a retro-style side-scrolling adventure game where you use a magic to create a grapple, which launches you throughout the world. Uh, did pretty well, made its goal. Looks and it's nice. Developer. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things is that uh, Grapple Knight is taking place as a worldwide project. It's not all in one location. The people in the team are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Star Wall Just the Tip is a fighting game where you play as narwhal-like characters trying to stab the other narwhal in the heart with your horn. Yes, and then you come up to four players, too, so it gets crazy with all the attacks. And with the you, and they bounce around, and when you get really close to each other, it slows down, so they have enough time to dodge the attack if they can. And thanks to the Kickstarter campaign, they're expanding to having a story mode and a lot of new characters. Yep, and, and it's coming out to PS4 and Wii U in, in the future as well. So it's got it's a, it's a very interesting experience. It's crazy neon colors everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then we end our 2013 Kickstarter list with Wild Season. This game is in the vein of Harvest Moon and Rune Factory, but it's more about the relationships you have with different characters. Yeah, and the other thing is it's called the Friend Zone Engine, which uh, is able to calculate how you're talking with the characters and when you're talking with the characters to establish relationships. Yeah, one thing about like Harvest Moon, you have, like some girls you just keep going to give them flowers every day, and they'll be like, "Marry me!" And you're like, "Yes, I married them." Well, in this game, if you do stuff like that, that might be in real life that'd be considered kind of stalkery or creepy or and creepy, and that can actually be used in the Friend Zone Engine to actually calculate that. So people are like, "You keep away. You've been here every day." You're just, 
Yeah, what's wrong so with you? it's things like that that try to expand on the relationships more so than the pre than any other games that it's based off of. And that concludes our Kickstarter 2013 list. Finally. Oh, man. With over 100 ga uh, Kickstarters, you probably should do this more often. Like, never. Yeah. There's just so many Kickstarters out there, it's impossible to keep track of all of them. In fact, there's probably a ton we missed. And if we missed one, your favorite, I'll put it in the comments below. Yeah, and, you know, if you haven't put money down for these, you're probably going to buy them in a, like, the next year anyways. So, so if this is what we're seeing from the indie developers. I'm really happy for them. Step it up, big developers. Yes, there's a lot of good stuff coming out. Yep, and uh, for that, we're going to go to the next video, which will be talking about the games that came out in 2013, yes. as opposed to the games that are not out from 2013. And these, we'll talk about these next year with, with Games of Crown 2014. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's going to be a long list. Yep, so uh, uh, click on the left side if you want to go back to the game news if you haven't already, or click on the right side if you want to go see the actual games of 2013. Again, not all of them. Cause not all of them because, so, you know, yeah. we're not going over 100 games of 2013. Oh my gosh.